Starting with uh, the presidential broadcast this morning, uh, where we have a series of uh, things that the president talked about, I decided to make uh, a list of the items that the president uh, you know, said. Now, he talked about the student loan that so far this administration has released uh, 45.6 billion uh, naira to various students as uh, student loans. Then also, he mentioned that establishing uh, a consumer protection agency has been carried out by this administration. Now, that will further uh, bring down, uh, you know, the prices of uh, food items in the market. Because what this consumer agency is going to be doing now is going to be ensuring that uh, prices of uh, food items are not skyrocketing anymore. Then uh, he also t said that he has ordered, that this administration has ordered the release of additional 50 billion and naira uh, from uh, monies recovered from EFCC, uh, you know, issues here and there, people corrupt in the country, the monies that EFCC recovered from them. That additional 50 billion naira has been gotten, and that money is uh, part of the student loan. Uh, that uh, this administration is going to be given. Then establishing of uh, technical empowerment uh, centers in uh, the uh, north, uh, you know, that is what the administration has done. But unfortunately, uh, the president said that uh, he regrets that, uh, you know, this uh, end uh, bad governance protest now has uh, made that center to be destroyed. I mean, some Irish youth had to go to uh, that center in Kaduna some few days ago, and it was pulled down. So that is not a good one. Then more than 36 billion uh, naira released uh, to states. Yeah, the president also talked about that. Uh, more than 36 billion naira so far has been released uh, to states. Perfect. Now so payments of uh, one billion each to large manufacturer in uh, the country is also what uh, the president has said in his broadcast, and. Uh, also signing off uh, the 70,000 Naira minimum wage to uh, workers. All these are towards, you know, ameliorating uh, the suffering of uh, the, the country, then uh, the suffering of the people, then providing incentives for farmers to reduce uh, the cost of uh, uh, production uh, for farmers. And uh, he now said that uh, this administration is working hard and the result will soon be felt. So the president has uh, spoken, eventually spoken to uh, Nigeria. So the big question is, uh, let us ensure, the big thing now is that let us ensure that what the president has said, uh, we listen so that uh, we can expect and wait for, uh, you know, uh, what the president has said to manifest in no distant time. All right, so to do justice to, you know, what uh, the, all the answers and uh, bad governance, uh, 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 you know, uh, demonstration, protests here and there, I uh, was so privileged to have uh, Solomon. Yeah, Solomon is uh, right here with us uh, this uh, morning. Uh, Solomon Omwebe Ereye is uh, right here with us this morning. Then also, Solomon, you're welcome to the program. Good morning, sir. Good yeah. morning, viewers at home. Yeah, we, we're going to be having uh, Peter YB via Zoom, who's going to be reaching us uh, from uh, the UK. When we get that connection uh, right, we'll just let him on. We understand if what we heard are uh, anything to go by. We understand that why Nigerians were protesting uh, here, we also had some Nigerians outside the country also, uh, you know, trying to solidarize uh, with uh, their brothers and sisters also protesting outside the shores of the country, particularly in UK. So we're going to be getting fillers from Peter OYB to see how correct uh, that is. Solomon, you're welcome one more time. Thank you. Now, sir. State of the Nation and uh, hashtag end hunger protest and bad governance protest. Uh, 2024 vis a vis the presidential statement. So the presidential address we just watched a while ago. What was your immediate response? <clears throat> I, good morning once again, good morning, viewers at home. I watched the interview this morning before heading down to the, the station. Broadcast, yeah. Yeah, the broadcast, sorry. Uh, to me, specifically, I think what makes the citizens to be outside is due to hunger. And that broadcast did not address the hunger directly. Mm. Why do I That's say your, so? From your own opinion? Your, from my own opinion. Okay. Why do I say so? Because if you check, what is actually causing this hunger that people are anticipating and advocating and here and there? Number one is subsidy. Where? Because where? If, for instance, when fuel was being sold at 197, we see the cost of things was down. But when it skyrocketed, all the price of commodity went up. Mm -hmm. If 
that price of oil was addressed. I believe by now everybody will be shouting, hailing the president. Mm. And of course, tax duty mm. on importation. Okay. So I know the president is also putting in modalities to ameliorate the suffering. But as of today, the common man in the streets, including myself and you, how do we really benefit directly from the system to ensure that what he has said now affects us? Mm. So you see people, they are out there anticipating. It's not just their fault. They want something, they want a policy that once it is implemented, you affect them directly, positively, mm. to the best interest of all. Yeah. Now, considering the government that is, um, you know, still under two years or there about now, uh, most of the plans, uh, the economic recovery plans that uh, this administration started, for some people, uh, it has only just begun. But uh, it's unfortunate that we're here. We are protesting, you know, uh, harsh uh, tag and bad governance and all that. Now, don't you think that Nigerians are perhaps not patient enough? Nigerians not appreciating enough. Not patient. Nigerians not patient, not patient enough. Yeah, don't you think so? <clears throat> For me, if, for instance, I, I am at home, mm. I'm hungry, and I'm asking my, no, I'm, let's say it's a tuition fee, I need tuition fee. I'm, I'm asking my dad, I need tuition fee. I'm asking my mom, I need tuition fee. And they are not responding to me. I will cry. So I, I think what is happening today is that the citizens are crying, that mm. they are hungry. Mm. That's, that's why they, it's not as if they are not patient enough. The, 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 the president government came, the Tinubu government came, last year is about 13 months now okay so the people the government has been asking the people to be patient with them mm. to be patient with them but the citizens also want to say okay within a time a specific time frame of time this will be done let's say in the next two months this will be done in the next three months this will be done there is a scheduled timetable for an event for policies to be unfolding to be to the people directly but when the people are saying that this actually these policies that is scheduled in specific time interval. The policies are actually manifested. You can tell the people to patient for one year, they will be patient. Mm. Then you will have actually developed trust in them. But by the time you, you come into, uh, you establish a policy, you tell them to be patient without any specific time frame that they are going to be patient. You know, it's, it's, called, it's called for the citizens to cry out. Mm. So right. that's why you see people today, they are out there in the streets. Okay. saying that they are hungry because mm -hmm. it's literally it's not their fault including myself i'm hungry also oh, you don't look hungry <laughs> As, so no 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 aside <laughs> this no it's just it's we call it packaging <laughs> we just have to package to to, to show on the media <laughs> aside aside the screen mm -hmm. you 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 feel that uh, everybody is hungry mm -hmm. so that's it all right so we have uh peter the rock uh, peter yb a member of uh, the pdp campaign council in diaspora to be specific in uh, the uk and of course, uh, uh, a political uh, analyst. Uh, Dr. Peter Waibi, very good morning to you. Uh, good morning to you, good man, Evans. Yeah. Now, we would have started from the hashtag and bad governance. Of course, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be getting your reactions as a Nigerian in diaspora. Uh, we heard that uh, some Nigerians had to solidarize with their brothers at home, uh, you know, protesting also far away in the UK. We're going to be knowing from you how true that is. But let's start from the presidential broadcast this morning. Just some few minutes ago, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, made a nationwide broadcast. And uh, he talked about a series of things that um, uh, Nigerians perhaps, uh, some Nigerians perhaps will say that they are really not different. I mean, there are some of uh, the uh, development uh, recovery plans that this administration has uh, been on. I, I don't know if you've seen one or two items that the president talked about a while ago. Yes, um, well, you know, the president, we don't expect anything better from the president's uh, speech. Nothing. It's based. No, you, you, you can't say so. Peter no, why no you, have just told, you have just asked me mm -hmm. if I have an observation from mm -hmm. the presidential speech, and I'm mm -hmm. giving you my personal observation, not okay. the national observation. Mm -hmm. Personally, um, I think the speech is vague. It's an order to dust, and it did not address any of the concern of the probability of the cause of the protest. It did not address any of the issues. The whole idea of the protest is seeking for 
a redress of the situation that may be very, very devastating to the people and to the economy. And so when you want to address the situation, you will address it from the cause of the present situation. Why was there a protestation? And then when you're able to realize the reason why you have protestation, then you address the root cause by way of providing circle that will not make the people come to you think. You know, because if they are expressing their disproportionate grievances as per the way government is going, then address that. If we don't address that, you just come into to how La Balus of speeches, nobody wants to hear the president talk anything right now outside providing solution for you know the people for the cause of the of the of the of the of the protest. I mean, we know the root cause of the protest. They all involve a lot of uh, human rights abuse, some employment, security matters, you know, inequality in the, in the space of people. You know, they're trying to force the government to do anything. You know, and if the government is not doing that, but protesters, uh, then the people have no joy in them to send this present uh, protest. Mm. But, 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 yeah, Doctor, I, I think we also need to look inward more. I mean, uh, perhaps people protesting today uh, may not be asking the right persons the right question. How do I mean? Take, for example, uh, I mean, it, it has to take the efforts of uh, the president this morning for most Nigerians to uh, probably know again that uh, so far, about 36 billion naira has been released to various state governors across the country. I mean, 36 billion naira is a huge amount of money. Uh, so don't you think that perhaps if this has been judiciously used uh, for the past few months now, uh, this hardship that Nigerians go through now wouldn't necessarily be so? Yes. You know, as I said, you know, this is a, a country with a quagmire economy, a very deleterious economy. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I say that? For instance, why are you giving governors that money? Why? It doesn't make sense. You see, our policies are very unequivocally senseless. You are giving governors billions of naira. Why, how, where from? We are not, you see, we are not refugees. We are not asylum seekers that you give succor to. Say refugees, okay, you are in the refugee camp, uh, we will give you this. No, it is, uh, listen, uh, is there any natural disaster that has created the, the unstoppable gallop into this type of uh, suffering of the people? What cost it? It's just bad policy. You remove subsidy from poor, of course, with the major reason why there's so much uh, suffer in the land. And then you are not giving stipends to governors. Why? Where is that one coming from? Now, let's look at subsidy, for instance. Subsidy is to alleviate the service of the people, you know, and to create a lot of, uh, you know, easiness for the life of the people. Now, if you remove that subsidy, now, that subsidy is the people's money. It's not one man's money. Assuming there was really subsidy, where they said you have a two trillion naira, whatever, and you now removed it, why? And you are giving soccer by way of uh, palliating to the people, why? You create suffer by yourself, and then you want to alleviate the suffering by handing out stipends. Does that make sense? Why did you leave the subsidy at the pair, yeah. whereas there was no subsidy? Oh, it's okay, it's wrong. Why did you leave that at the pair? And allow the people to take care of themselves from the suffering. In any case, in a developed nation or in a developed developed nation, the people have the rights to their money and how it is spent. You, as a president or lawmaker, don't have the right to tell the people how their money should be spent. In in UK, for instance, they are subsidizing nearly everything. Their health system, the NHS, is subsidized. Their transport system is subsidized. Their housing system is subsidized. You don't expect them to remove the subsidy from NHS now, and then they come and start giving you paracetamol in your house. Does that make sense? 
if you are still using money, you are still using money, you are not giving it to governors. Why do you take money from the generality of the people by way of social service and you are giving it to individuals to disperse? It's very criminally, it's, it's evil and it's criminalious. I mean, you should be taken to court for, for such things because you have no right to create stuff in the land and then come and start to give the stipends at your own will and at your own chest. What, what is the meaning of all those type of things? It's, it's, it's very low, in, it's very low in terms of, in terms of governance. No, you, 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 Dr. Wabi, okay. let us be careful with the way uh, we make our responses now. <laughs> let us be careful with that. Okay, that's now, fair. Okay, that is fair. Okay. Yeah. But if you, let, let, let's look at UK, for instance. Not mm. quite a few, a, few, a few months ago, they had election. And they voted that some, some men, they believe we are not performing proper in government. Nobody went to court because it was transparent. Why are we so undemocratic in a democratic dispensation this is this is undemocratic you 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 bring out you take what belongs to the people and then harness it the way you want to and then start to give out scrumps to the people how is that one how is that one how is that one a relief after a relief put back the subsidy yeah and, let, then, let, let, check, mm. and then check the fraudulent process by which this subsidy has become a thing for criminals to harness. Mm. You know, All right. Okay. Yeah, let me pause you so that I'll come uh, to Solomon here. Now, now, now Solomon, uh, just as we're trying to, uh, you know, further establish that uh, perhaps Nigerians may not be reacting, uh, you know, rightly. How do I mean? I mean, 36 billion naira given to state uh, uh, governments, state uh, governors, as it were. You know, I wanted to look at that. <clears throat> I heard you saying 36 billion, mm. 36 billion given to states. Mm. This money, I, in fact, on paper, on this money, I, I had 570 billion. 570 billion? Billion, yes. Released to the 36 mm. states. Mm. And I'm on national television, I can be quoted. Mm. 570 billion released right, to so the states. Question... And yesterday I was on channel. Yeah. I heard Oshomole. Mm. He said last month, July, but 11 billion was released to Edo State Government. Mm. You know, it is not just a matter of the federal loan. Not Even just Edo State Government. I'm, I'm uh, coming. To no, other no, to other uh, governments. I'm, using, as if, uh, I'm using my state now. Uh, let us not look as if maybe Edo State Governor got uh, five billion. No, other no. State did not I'm, get. I'm, so coming. Uh, I'm just trying to make an example. Yeah, yeah. Like starting with my state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my state, yesterday I watched on channel when the senator, distinguished senator Shomole was being interviewed. And he said, last month, about 11 billion, July last month, about 11 billion was released to Edo State government. Yeah, but I'm telling you, know, you now to, that, that to, it was not just Edo State government. Alone. Uh, yes, All yes, I'm using, I'm using Edo State now oh, as okay. a practical example. Yeah, yeah. That money, when I read on paper this money and also on the broadcast from President Tinibu, he said that money is to support the citizens. Take, for instance, my local government mm. of origin, Igwebe local government, mm. it has 10 words. If out of 11 billion, for instance, if 500 million, Edo State is 18 local government, if, for instance, 500 million each to all the local governments, my local government will have 500 million. 500 million divided by 10, that is 50 million. It means in my world, Ibele, we have 500 million. A house that we get 50, 50, 50,000 each, that is about 1,000 household. Mm. And uh, you see, it, I doubt they have up to 1,000 households. That's not five, five, 50 million mm. divided by 50,000. Mm. It's 500 households. Mm. Yeah. So if such amount is given to those people, at least to help them in their various grassroots level, at least people will at least be happy. Mm. Why the policy is being set up at the national is prevailing. Yeah, so the question, back to the question now, because this hashtag and bad governance protest is somehow all geared towards uh, the federal government. So nobody seems to be uh, talking about the state government along uh, this uh, direction. That is what I, that, that is why I use uh, those states, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. as a case study. 11, million, 11 billion 
Sat last month was released to push to support the citizens. Hmm? Mm. For instance, the Igwebe local government, 10 watts, 50, 50, 50 million each, for instance. In the building, if we have 50, 50,000 to 1,000 households, mm. that would at least save a breakfast mm. for at least maybe two weeks or help, help that household for at least a week. Mm. Okay. You it also have at least some, some benefit. Mm. I must not necessarily be in a particular ruling class before I can benefit from the government. Mm. The Tinibu government is APC. The Edo State government is PDP. Yeah. That money was sent to Edo State. That is from APC government to PDP government mm -hmm. to help this ordinary man, to help the citizens. Mm. So me and you, we should be also be a, benef a beneficiary that is. to that uh, program okay. from the right. federal government. Okay, all right. So back to uh, YB now. Dr. YB, you're still there. Now, a while ago, you talked about... Uh, uh, the petroleum uh, subsidy. You were trying to say that uh, the, the, the president removed. This time, I have to talk about that. I also try as much as possible to let uh, the discussant know that uh, we all saw what happened. Uh, it was a process that eventually uh, that's, uh, you know, resulted at uh, removal of the fair subsidy. We're talking about a law here, a legislation that went through uh, the two chambers of our leg legislature, finally the president had to accept it. So when we say the federal the president removed, you know, it sounds as if he's single-handedly. So don't you think that process that the president, that the, the system had in arriving at that, we also need that same process back, rather than blaming the Mr. President that he removed the petroleum, uh, you know, subsidy? You see, um, you know, when, when is it, in the first instance, the presidential system of government is so wrong in an African country. What is it presidenting for? We should go back to a parliamentary system of government where the parliamentarians hold the prime minister responsible on a weekly basis, discussion. You know, they come into interaction. They, they come into the, the panels of discussion every other week. But in presidential system, the president just wants to sit down somewhere for two, three years. He doesn't even want, he doesn't even want to make a statement and he cannot hold him accountable to it. So why are we practicing it? Why are we practicing with over 360 um, uh, House of Parliamentarians? What are they parliamentary? Uh, with over 100, over, over 100 and whatever, 90 something, uh, 109 senators. What, what laws are they making? We cannot dress ourselves in the habiliments of Paul Wood. No. Now coming back to the pedestrian way they have, uh, they have removed subsidy, you know, and then you see now, look at as, as a matter of fact, a government that is properly <laughs> focused with huge ecclesiastical intellectualism in terms of policy making and the effectiveness and implementation of such policies, we know that is pedestal. It's even fun time to introduce the removal of subsidy and introduce uh, what they call palliatives. As I said before. These things are given to to refugees, and uh, you know, you know, is physically challenged. Why is it governance is social? It's, it's social amenities. When you had four subsidy, it's social amenities for everybody. You don't have to choose, you know, and uh, favorize by favoritism one or two person. You give governor the money. Why do you give governor the money? Is it not for social amenities? Maybe. And I, I hear somebody say, we come and give each house 50,000. What does each house 50,000 mean? That, 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 you see, those are pedestrians. The money is for social amenities, build roads. When you build roads, it becomes enabling for everybody to enjoy it. Provide transport system. It will, it will provide for everybody to enjoy it. Provide light for everybody, education for everybody. It's not about PDP government giving APC government, APC government come and give to PCP government. What does that mean? Those are the old board governments. These are modern <laughs> governments. We are talking about 2024, a digital age, rocket science age. I'm talking about one family will take 10,000, another family, no. Yeah, Dr. Peter. Yeah, Dr. Peter. An increase in bread price. Mm. Wait, let me tell you one. So, one minute. The, the, the French Revolution, the yellow French best revolution, it was, they were, they were, they were protesting because of 
an increase in bread price. Bread price, they stayed on the street for three weeks. You don't put, you don't increase bread price like that because those are social. Everybody buys bread. So when government, what, why is government giving us uh, palliative? Did the government not sit down to know in the first instance the devastating effect or the negative effect, the economic negative effect and the price act that will be involved or that we have made from the removal of foreign subsidy? Are they not aware? Don't they have economic advisors? In, 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 in the face of removing the square subsidy, the, the government also devalued the Naira because they want to borrow money. And I have told them if you want to borrow money, you have to devalue your, your Naira. And the devaluation is to be able to effect and enhance exportation, you know, and to create value for your goods. We don't even have any manufacturing that we need to export. So why are we devaluing our Naira? And why you devalue your Naira? They give you money to borrow. You don't use the money to enhance your productivity or enhance your growth of economic growth. You use the money to be looking for how to buy jet for the president. You use the money you borrow to be looking for how to buy uh, uh, yachts for the president. You use the money you borrow to be able to buy SUVs for Nabio and his people in the Senate. You use All the right. money to All give it. All right, so uh, I had to, to go to ads. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, so uh, we will just uh, take off that uh, lecture now. All right, so back to, 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 to society of state, uh, uh, Mr. Solomon. Now, uh, if you look at, look at the trajectory of what has been going on, uh, you talk about uh, the end of bad governance, uh, you know, protest and all that vis a vis this presidential uh, broadcast. One thing that is so certain is that one is trying to push the blame to another. Uh, the state governors, most especially opposition states now, they've been trying to look at, hey, this is not our issue now. You go meet the federal government. But the federal government, again, by this broadcast, <laughs> you know, has somehow reminded, told Nigerians that, look, I gave 36 billion a naira to state governors. You said you read a while ago, uh, you know, from the newspaper, not even 36 billion now. So in all of all this now, what, who do you think is not doing the needful? Is it the state governors that are not actually utilizing the money well, or like what uh, Dr. Uh, Wago was trying to establish, that the federal government need not give uh, the money uh, to the state governors? But mind you again, we're told that the closest, uh, you know, governance to the people local. are the state, not even the local now, let's, the, let's say the state governors because of the purpose of this discourse. I want to react to that. Just like I said, you know, in, they are, people are saying bad governors, bad governors. So it, you know, government street here, they have the national, the state, and the local. And the local. Yeah. So people are the local. In fact, how many people are the local even know their counselor to advocate for them, you know, to, to, to tell the chairman, the local government chairman, their interest that, ah, this is what we are suffering. Mm -hmm. Then talks about assembly. Mm. How many people? If 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 people at the grass group are not even assess the council, how are you sure that they can they can accept the house of rep? Mm, and that's... mind you, I was also watching something on channel yesterday, on a sister TV oh, station. Yeah, station yes, yeah, yes, on a sister TV station. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the the whole essence of governance, governance. I believe. To start with, if we have financial autonomy mm. to the judiciary, to the legislators, I believe they, they should be able to advocate for the people. You understand? Mm. Because, because when they are constrained of this autonomy, you see them what most people described mm. as stooge mm. to the executives. Mm. Yeah, we, we, we are, we, the financial autonomy to local government has been signed into law. So. Yeah, but has it been manifesting? Okay. We still have uh, Dr. Peter YB, uh, you know, join us uh, virtually from the UK uh, this morning. Peter de Rock, YB, uh, nice to have you. And also Solomon is still right here. So back to Peter now. Uh, Dr. Dr. Peter, yeah, we have you now. Now, uh, Dr., uh, I want to give us a first-hand information. Uh, we heard back home in Nigeria that uh, uh, Nigerians in diaspora, particularly in the, in the UK, had to join, you know, in the protest. There were some uh, pockets of reports of social media visuals that uh, made rounds 
that Nigerians had to protest. How true is that? Yes, it is. Uh, I mean, it is. It, it is gladly true. Um, you know, uh, Nigerians wherever they are are Nigerians, um, and the pains and pangs of uh, sufferings of any Nigerian anywhere in the world, it's uh, conjugational. Is jointly felt by by any citizens of uh, of that same country, whether Nigerians are in diaspora or not, their pains are felt heavily, even heavier than those in Nigeria, because they feel sad for a country like Nigeria that is sinking, you know, um, endlessly into the into the darkness of a piece of extreme poverty, which has been ignited by the policies of uh, leaders who know next to nothing about uh, alleviating the surface of the people. So Nigerians also gathered here to the UK and elsewhere in the diaspora to, to prevent you know, that dissatisfaction about the rate of poverty in Nigeria, the rate of insecurity, and uh, the fuel smuggling. All these were occasioned from the removal of the fuel subsidy. First and foremost, uh, very soon, they are going to be visiting the embassies overseas and uh, the diasporans are going to be visiting embassies overseas and be having to you know to express that satisfaction about the downturn of the economy to the ambassadors and to the embassies itself or uh, high commissioners where there's uh, you know relations for high commission so those ones are on the play and Nigerians are also Nigerians in diaspora are also agitating and also willing and venting for the for the possibility of Nigerians of diaspora to be able to cast their votes in general elections, in any general elections that are taking place in Nigeria. I was I was also online with you the last time when we witnessed South Africans voting in the diaspora. Those are measures that we granulate into better governance and better responsibility by way of social responsibility to the people by the government, even in business interactions. There are what you call companies are banded by certain laws to, to take part in social responsibility, you know, in the areas that are doing business. That is, create some kind of, uh, you know, uh, some kind of support to the people in the area you are doing business with. Not the talk of a government. Government have no social responsibility at all in Nigeria. They don't have any. They don't feel any. Maybe you came up one time in the Senate and said it was going to give millions to some senators for Christmas. Is a senator more Nigerian than an ordinary Nigerian? And that's a Macabre. Somebody on the news last time I heard he was calling Nigerians idiots. And no, the you're, people you're, responded Dr. to him. Dr. Waibe, it was something that we cannot substantiate. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Well, let's let's look into so, the, yeah. the diaspora, yes. The diaspora, yes. Also, human beings, the Nigerian flesh and blood in them. And also, they protested. And they are, they are still planning a bigger protest in, among the diaspora in the rest of uh, the world. Mm bigger and uh, more effective protestation, you know, because we cannot allow, you know, the wrongs or we cannot allow the untimely death based on sufferings of your people to continue. You must find a way to address it. And if government cannot address it amiably, then the people will have no choice but to come into the need. If government cannot propitiate, if they cannot alleviate the people, then the people must come in to try to help themselves. Okay. That's All right. So you, you seem to be so concerned about uh, good governance. In other words, you are so you seem to also to be so dissatisfied with uh, the government back home. Uh, I heard you when you talked. Uh, you know, for you were trying to make support for uh, Nigerians in diaspora voting. Now, do you think that we probably uh, maybe increase uh, the quality of uh, governments in Nigeria when we have Nigerians in diaspora voting? Yes, it will increase the quality of governance in Nigeria. Because when you beam the light, if you beam the such light, you know, in sometimes evil people can contrive the lot in darkness. But when you find uh, the light, evil is the vanity. I mean, there's no way you shine a light that darkness will stay. No, once you shine your light, the darkness will vanish. And darkness is mostly attributed to evil in most of the times all over the world, even in the Bible today. So if Nigerians in the Akura are now voting, it will become a kind of a global knowledge and it will become a kind of a global light and the rest of the world will be part of it. 
-hmm. and you can be you 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 find yourself doing the right thing because every other person is watching you. And if we are looking at ourselves as part of the global uh, village, they almost do according to how the rest of the world is doing. Mm -hmm. As I told you earlier on, ordinarily last month there we had the we had general elections in UK. Nobody went nobody went to court. And that is another thing we must address. We must rearrange the address and rewrite our constitution. Because our constitution, we cannot give our constitution such frivolous powers as to the president must be the one, or the presidential office must be the one, or the president the president must be the one to appoint a chief judge. The chief judge of the country should not be appointed by the, by the president. They have a process. They, they themselves are, are an organization. They themselves can come into line of appointment of uh, the chief judge, just as they do in, in, in the States. You come into a line, you come into by ascension, you know, uh, uh, what they call, you know, kind of uh, constructive ascension. You come into ascension, uh, judge, 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 one, judge, two, judge, three, and you call it chief justice. Yeah, and but, but chief, we, we chief, know that the National Assembly, the National Assembly does scrutinize. And we should write the constitution, remove all such powers for the president to move to appoint INEP, president to be able to appoint chief of uh, army staff, mm -hmm. president to be able to appoint uh, a, a IG of police. If the president appoints the IG of police and the, and the, and the uh, chief of the chief of general staff of the army, he will always direct them. The, 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 the chief of general staff of army came out last time to be talking about this, uh, this uh, uh, you know, protestation. Yeah, Dr. Wybe, let, let, us, let us be careful with the way we say sorry? that the president appoints. I mean, we all know that all these appointments are subject to some form of scrutiny. I mean, the National Assembly is always there. The chief just uh, that you talked about a while ago, it's not just that Mr. President single-handedly appoints. I mean, it goes through a series of uh, uh, scrutiny, don't you know? Don't you think so? I think so, but what the Constitution says that the president has the power to appoint. Mm. If they say he has the power to appoint, that what power he is. That's mm. what it is. No, if you okay. rewrite the constitution and, and, and say let the appointments be in line with procedures, mm. you, you, that would be a lot, a, a, a lot better for administrative purposes, for good governance. Okay. The last time the military, the, the, mm. the, the chief of uh, general staff of, uh, of, the, of the army came on air, instead of ameliorating the public, he was threatening the public and warning the public. I don't see the business of army in a civilian regime. There's no business of army there unless the government invites the army in, in the case of emergency. The army, the chief of army staff cannot just come in and say, I want to warn the public. Who are you warning? You, we are, we see, we, you see, we miss, you see, we leave these things for too late. You should be able to nip it and you know when these things are really in their head. This can serious kind of governance is really in sense. You, you know, army should be in the parents. Don't come and say, We are warning, I want to warn, warn who. Okay, all right, uh, Dr. Wabi, let's come back I to the stage to now. Protest because they are protesting because mm. of uh, their amenities are, are ready them into, into, into on, on, on evil poverty. There's so much differentiation by this uh, government erasing and eroding the middle class that does not exist anymore. Mm. I mean, all right, so back to the set now, we still have Solomon here. Yeah, Solomon. Uh, so uh, let's uh, look at uh, you know the whole uh, thing one more time. Particularly the student loan uh, that uh, Mr. President talked about. Now it appears that uh, youths are in the centre of this protest. There's no doubt about that. And we'll talk about youth. We'll talk about students and all that. Now, uh, for most people, uh, the presidency, this administration, should look for more ways to pacify. Nigerians, rather than trying to uh, pacify more of youth than other uh, Nigerians. I, I don't know what you have to say about that. Well, looking at the student loan, mm -hmm. <clears throat> take for instance Uniben, which is one of the biggest federal institutions in Nigeria today. Uniben is not in that list. The student loan? Yes. It's, it's, in, sta it's in stages <laughs> now? The yes, I, saw, I, I know, I know. Okay. As, as big as it is. Mm. As big as it is. You mean this first stage of yes, the beneficiaries? Yes, as big it as, as big, it will not be. I, I know. Yeah. I'm, I know. As, as big as I'm using. I, I, if you look me, I always domesticate. I know, but yes, let yeah. us also I'm, say it in such I'm, a way that, so that you know, I'm, maybe, I understand. Yeah. I'm using my state yeah. now as an example, as a case study. Mm. 
Unibe is not on the list for of now. The, for now, okay. for the benefit. It doesn't mean that it will not be yes, tomorrow. Yes, hopefully it might be, but for today. Yeah. But the thing is, generally, some persons are saying uh, uh, hoodlums are attacking protesters. When you don't employ the youth, when there is lack of education, you create you create process that you might address mm. as hoodlums. Mm. So the government should be responsible to the citizens. Recall, the primary purpose of government, which is, which is chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2b, that states that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So today, the people are just asking for welfare. Give us welfare. Give us security so that we can go back to our farms. That is why you see the youth are outside they are anticipating we need good governor because they need welfare they need security they want to go back to the farm and of course why the youth are doing this they should not destroy government properties mm -hmm. because it is their it is the taxpayers money that is used to make those facilities to put those facilities in place mm -hmm. so they should not be seen as a tool to destroy government properties because it's just like i am hungry i take my wristwatch i break it I say because I am hungry. No, you don't destroy government property because that property is also is also your own yeah. because it is the taxpayers' money. So they can, the, the the people should exercise their their grievances. They should protest peacefully, but they shouldn't engage in any form of destruction. This morning, I I, I watched on social media on uh, the, the national PRO uh, 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 Prince national PRO. Put up a national PR of, what of police of Nigeria police okay, force. They, they, yes, put okay. up put up a a, a, a this thing a a, a, carpet. a carpet that the protesters were running after an officer, a police officer with a rifle. Okay, he put on a statement, so to say. An no, it was a video. Okay, it was okay. a video that the protesters, the protesters, I, I watched it, mm. was running after a pol a, an, a police officer. With a rifle, that is no good. Mm. The the protester was holding a wood. That is that is not good. That is no longer protest. Mm. But one will ask, what led to that that scenario? No, what, about, what what led to that kind of scenario that the, the protester would not be attacking an officer? Probably okay. something must, must have happened, but we didn't see what happened that led to that scenario. But however, yeah, but, just go but, but, but however, mm. the protesters should protest peacefully. And they shouldn't engage okay. in any okay. form of destruction. And government should please hear the cry of the protesters. They are just asking for the basis, the fundamental that is enshrined in the constitution shall be the primary purpose of government, security and welfare. Okay. All right. So we have our correspondents in uh, Lagos, Agboje, who is on, on standby to let us uh, know uh, the situation report right now. I mean, uh, the hashtag and uh, bad governance uh, uh, protests. Uh, therefore, Agboje, very good morning to you. What is the situation like in Lagos right now? Thanks for having me from Lagos. Right now, we are at the Freedom Square or what you can refer to as the Ghani family uh, park, uh, where the protest was confided to uh, by the protesters are uh, uh, restricted to by the court. Um, after the pronouncement of Mr. President this morning, um, putting a stop to the protest, uh, we have some protesters that are still here uh, protesting, though they are few in number now. Um, but we, we know that the, the police is also here, security agents are here, um, watching keenly what is happening. And uh, the, 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 the protesters, they are just few number, uh, unlike what we used to see before now. If you look behind me right now, these are the few protesters that we have on the ground. Of course, um, we don't know what is going to happen after now if there's going to be an enforcement of the presidential order of security um, agencies taking over the streets. But of course, before now, this protest in Lagos State had been very peaceful. The commissioner of police has seen to it that no life has been lost, property has not been damaged, and he had always been here talking with the protesters on the need to be peaceful. 
But we don't know if the situation is going to take a new dimension this morning following the presidential order. But just to let you know that the protesters, some of them are still here. They're organizing a church service here this morning, though they are few in number. Though we are not seeing some of the human rights activists that we saw yesterday here this morning. But these ones are saying that they are not leaving the streets, that though they had what the president said, but they are not going to leave the streets because they, they demand that the president reorder or reverse uh, the pump price of petroleum products. Fuller streets. Uh, we had uh, more protesters at this time. Now, if you just check your time now, it's about 8.55, uh, 8.50 a.m. Uh, in Nigeria. So around this time yesterday, the streets were already, you know, agog with activities relating to the protest and all that. So from what you said now, you said you do not know whether it was because of the presidential order that the protest should be put to, to a stop or for the fact that it's on a Sunday. But would you also want to agree uh, that perhaps the presidential, uh, you know, briefing, uh, the presidential, uh, you know, address now, letting Nigerians know what this administration has done so far, may perhaps be having some effects, uh, you know, on the protesters. Would you want to say so? Yes, we cannot, we cannot um, look out from that. Um, it might be the reasons why some of the protesters may have shared the protest. But those that are here are saying that they didn't get results from their expectations were not met by the presidential um, speech and broadcast this morning. That is why they actually came out to register their displeasure over the, the presidential broadcast and speech, which was made by Mr. President to say that they are going to um, continue, that most of their demands were not met by the president, that they are asking the president to, as a matter of urgency, quickly re reverse the pump price of petroleum products to the initial price before subsidies were taken up. So we, we don't we don't actually know. We can't tell if it is the broadcast this morning that has reduced this number to a fear number that is not even up to 50 persons here this morning. When this protest started, we had thousands here. But as of this morning, which is the fourth day of the protest, what we are seeing is less than 50 persons here uh, protesting this morning. Of course, possibly that would have added to it. Possibly some of the protesters may have shaped the protest because of uh, the, the, the plea by Mr. President that they should not continue the protest anymore. Um, um, I want to say thank you to you, Agboji. We hope to get more fillers uh, from you. Maybe uh, when you change your location uh, soon, uh, you may have uh, similar reports, or maybe you have uh, more protesters uh, coming out. Agboji, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so back to our set now on stage. I would be Ikuria there, ITV correspondent in Lagos, uh, giving us the situation report in one of the centers of uh, the protest in Lagos. Now, uh, Dr. Owaibi, we still have you there. Uh, as we wrap up this segment now, now, what is your message to Nigerians back home? Bearing in mind that uh, uh, if Nigerians in diaspora are concerned, uh, right now, I think we should begin to tell our brothers and sisters back home that. Uh, the president has spoken. Let us give the president the benefit of the doubt. So why be? Yes, um, that, is, that is very true, uh, what you have said. But uh, the president has spoken. Uh, what, he, what, he, what he talked about is not in relation to ameliorating the, the stress people are going through in Nigeria. I uh, mean, he did not address any incidents at all. As the last, as your correspondent said, let him remove the first subsidy. Sorry, let him put back, you know, the petrol pump price as it were before he removed this oil subsidy. Because if, if if you are doing something for the benefit of your people, then you're able to calculate the risk and the injuriousness that will be occasioned from such a policy that you enact. Now, if you if you look at the disadvantages and the disastrous effect of removing the subsidy, you cannot equate it to the benefit of the people. As a matter of fact, we have seen that there's not a single benefit to the people by removing the first subsidy. So why remove it? It, it, it is the people's money. Allow them to have the benefit of their wealth of a nation. So don't bring sufferings to them by every policy, 
every nook and turn, the right time they were going to be giving money to be paying in interest on, on, on bank transfers, POT, cost of transfer, they were going to be paying uh, some they, they were good, they were going to be taxing it. You know, bring some, you know, some some shuffle. You know, let's change the old habit of uh, you know this old order. Let's resist this old order of uh, you know one man becoming too autocratic or too imperialist. You know, we, let's have a, a subtle government so that the people can at least try in 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 in, in health while they are alive. Okay, I want to say one so, very big thank you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I want to say a very big thank you to Dr. Peter Owaibi, a member of our PDP campaign organization in diaspora in UK, to be specific, uh, there in his mind on some of uh, the issues concerning uh, the hashtag and bad governance protests in Nigeria. The four, that's uh, today. All right, so uh, as we wrap up one more time, uh, Solomon, uh, 30 seconds. Uh, what's your reaction so far? Hmm? Yeah, Every, go on, all, Nigeria, all Nigerians have watched the president's uh, Briefing this morning, and uh, I think the specifics specifics that the protesters are anticipating, I really didn't see it addressed. But uh, let's hope by the time I leave this stadium, that we, we people are not asking. But for me, I'm in solidarity with the protesters because what they are asking for is a fundamental issue. Mm. It affects all, every one of us. It affects all the citizens of the country. So the president should please help, the, not just the president, the governments, let me use that word, the mm. government should please help the citizens, give them welfare, give them security, so that at least everybody can be smiling mm. that indeed this Nigeria is in favor of us all, not just the political elite. I don't need to belong to a particular political party before I can benefit from the government of that party. Okay. Lest we all benefit, irrespective of political party. And also, the protesters should as a matter of immediate effect, after this protest, they should register their voter's card. Anytime there is an election, they should always come out. They should use their voter's card to elect whosoever they want as their leader. Okay. Whosoever that emerged through the process, they should accept it. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, so once a very big thank you to Solomon. Uh, Solomon, yeah, Solomon. Uh, Amoibe Oreye is a member of the Labour Party Campaign Council in Edo State. Thank you so much. Thank so, so you. Much.